thumbnail crew. I wasn't going to vlog. But then I was like, eh, might as well. So I just got out of class and I'm on my way to the gym. I'm actually outside the gym. So I'm plaiting my hair. Let me turn this. Oh, it's on. All right, so I'm plaiting my hair and I'm just getting ready to work out. I don't know what body part I'm going to work today. I always do legs because, child, these legs need to get right for the summer. Um, but I'm definitely going to do some cardio and then I'm either going to do back or legs. I love doing back and I love doing legs. But I definitely need this cardio because, child, I gained so much weight. Mm. Not good. Not good. Summer coming up. I need to get together. But anyway, so today in school, I was so nervous, y'all. So first I had to take a test. And I didn't study for the test. Oh, I looked so... Ooh. So today in class, I learned and talked and studied um, acrylics and like the different monomers and how they smell tells you how they dry, which I had no idea. For example, the regular strong smelling uh, monomer, you want to use that more. Do I remember? I think I forgot. The regular strong smelling monomers you want to use that as a medium consistency, like a medium B. The non-smelling monomers, like the odorless monomers, those take a long time to dry, so you want to use a dryer bead with that. I hope I'm not mixing those two up, but when I get home, I'm gonna pull out the book and I'm gonna let you guys know. I have to practice my three ball method um, <laughs> acrylic application, because y'all know I'll be doing like five beads, 20 beads, 16 beads like whatever but i really do have to practice my three ball method because my instructor is always like nikki nikki too many balls too many beads <laughs> so i have to practice that i have to practice patting because she's always telling me you're brushing too much you're brushing too much don't brush just pat so i have to practice my patting i have to practice my three ball method and i will let you guys know what the book says about the different monomers and how they dry i thought that was so cool because i just figured the way the acrylic set had more to do with the powder i didn't realize it was the monomer that was doing that and you can tell how it's going to set just by smelling it. I didn't know that. So that was a good read. So that was one chapter. That was chapter 17. I took that test. I think I got an A on that one. And then I also took a test on gels, guys. And I learned a lot on gels. But I'm going to save the gels for another video. Because if I do acrylic and gels in one video, we'll be here all night. So... Like I said, I'm at the gym. I'm about to go get it in. When I get home, I will pull out my book and we shall study together. And I'll let you guys know what I learned, okay? All right, now, crew, so I'm home and I'm ready to start practicing my three ball method. If you ever watch me do acrylics, you know that it is not three balls at all. But we gonna see. We gonna try. I'm using Mia Secret. I like to use Mia Secret when I'm practicing because it's cheap and I don't want to use a lot of my um, Young Nails acrylic because it's a little bit more pricey. I'd rather use that on people. And then these are the tips that I showed you the other day. I really like them. I got them from Amazon. Link will be in the description box below. But I like them because they fit right into Nala and they're very, very good and sturdy and I just like to practice with them. So if you have a hand like this and you need some more tips you can look into investing in these so I have all the tips in Nala and today I'm going to use my bell drill this is this one here and I have a new drill tomorrow I'm going to show you guys is a new drill from this same company so I'm very 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 excited to show you guys that drill for try it Tuesday stay tuned for that but this drill is very good too and I love it and that's what I'm going to use today now this is a vitamin shop pill box yes guys it's a box for pills got it from the vitamin shop but look I keep my little drill bits in there and it organizes them so well Oh my gosh, I love it. 
Now I'm going to use this 240 grit sanding band to just buff the shine off of Nala. So I pushed back her cuticles and now I'm removing the surface shine of her nails. It is the exact same prep that I use all the time. Then I'm going to go in with two coats of my prep and clean dehydrate. So you put one coat on all the nails, you let that dry, and then you put a second coat. And all of you guys that watch me all the time, you're like, oh my gosh, I know that by now. But there's a lot of new people out there and I just want them to feel comfortable as well. So I'm just repeating it. Don't kill me, people. Don't kill me. Once that dries, you go in with two coats of your primer. This is the Mia Secret Primer. So you do it exactly the same way. You put a thin coat on all the nails, let that dry, and then go ahead with the second coat. All right. So now time for the acrylic. Oh my God. Okay. So watch me do it while I read to you different things that stuck out to me in the book now keep in mind the first nail is going to be horrible because it's always horrible my first nail always comes out like crap I don't know what to do guys I don't know what to do and I always think about you know what practicing before I start to record so that you guys won't see me mess up but then again we're all human and you guys are gonna mess up too and I don't want you guys to feel like you are just a failure so you know what i just document my failures too and that way we all feel human together so go ahead and watch me well maybe not watch me do the first one like skip the first one and then watch when i get around the third the fourth and the fifth now okay all right so now before we could talk about the three ball method we have to get into the monomer to polymer ratio so the liquid and the powder ratio have to be intact before we can even get into how many balls you're putting down to create a nail so the book says if you have an equal amount of liquid and powder then that is a dry bead so if it's a one-to-one -one ratio then the bead of acrylic is going to be dry and powdery if you have twice as much liquid to powder, then that is going to be a wet bead. And then so halfway in between that is a medium bead, which makes sense. So one and a half more liquid than powder is how you create a medium bead. Now, when I say that to you or when you read that in the book, it makes zero sense, zero. You actually have to play with it and know your powder and know your monomer and see what creates a wet medium or dry bead because all of the powders and liquids they all work differently so just reading it in the book it may not click for you but once you really put it to practice you'll get it it's going to take practice but you'll get it so what i found interesting with this is that a regular monomer and powder set so like me a secret or young nails for example that you want to work with a medium consistency bead okay but if you are using something with less odor and the only monomer that i could think of that has less of an odor might be enail couture or something like that so if it's an odorless monomer those monomer and acrylic sets requires less monomer so when you're doing a set of acrylics with an odorless monomer system you want to use a dry bead and you want to use a flat brush because the flatter the brush, the less liquid it's going to hold. So just keep that in mind. If you're using a regular monomer and acrylic, you could use a round brush, flat brush, whatever you want. But those beads, you can make a little bit more wet. And then if it's odorless, you want to use a drier consistency bead because those acrylic sets are going to take a long time to dry. And if you have a lot of monomer in that type of acrylic set, it's going to flood the cuticles, it's going to run all over the place, and you're going to have a hard time dealing with that type of acrylic. And maybe for some of you guys who are out there using Enel Couture or some other odorless type system, and it's not working out for you, maybe try to decrease the amount of monomer that you're using and see if that helps out. Another thing that I found interesting is that the acrylic systems use benzoyl peroxide, which is the exact same thing that we buy over the counter. Exact same ingredient. That's used in the nail industry to speed up the hardening or the curing of the acrylic sets. So different acrylic systems use a different amount of the peroxide. And since the peroxide is what is causing the curing or the hardening 
of the acrylic system, it is not recommended that you mix monomer and polymer from a different system. So for example, if I had Mia Secret monomer, I wouldn't want to use Enel Couture powder because there's a different amount of peroxide needed to cure different systems. And if we don't know what the system requires, mixing the acrylic and the monomer is not a good idea. So I know a lot of you guys out there mix acrylic and monomer, and sometimes I do too, but now reading this, they're saying if you do that, it might cause yellowing of your acrylic system, it might cause weakening of the acrylic system because it's not curing correctly. So it may seem like the nails are hardening or cured or dried correctly, but then you may wonder why they're breaking so easily. You know, it could be that you're not using the right monomer and the right polymer. So just consider that if your nails are turning different colors, like yellowing prematurely and or they're breaking very easily. Okay, so equally important to the system that you're using is the nail brush. And the book suggests that you only use a natural Kalinske or a sable brush, maybe even a blend of both. But synthetic brushes and less expensive brushes do not pick up enough monomer, so it does not release the liquid properly. And then you're trying to get a medium bead, and now you have a dry bead, or you want a wet bead, and now you got a medium bead. It's just not going to be a consistent flow. So invest in a really good brush. The book also says that you want to start out with an eight oval brush. That's the most common brush. But the brush that I'm using now is a size 10. I got this from Enel Couture and I really, really like it. In case you guys want to purchase one, I will leave the link below. But there are really, really good brushes all over Amazon. It does not have to be this particular one. Just make sure that it's Kalinske or Sable and you should be just fine. All right, nail crew, we are moving right along. Another thing this chapter talks about is the files. They call them abrasives, quote unquote. And you have to know what type of abrasive you're going to use and for what. So the book suggests that you want a coarse grit file. So 100 grit or lower. That's when you're thinning the enhancement out. If you're preparing for a refill or a rebalance, that is the file or the grit that you want to use. On the enhancement only, you never want to use that course of a grit on the natural nail. Then you could use a medium grit file, so that's 150 to 180 for the initial shaping, for the perimeter of the nail, for finishing the overall surface and things like that. You also do not want to use a 180 grit on the natural nail plate. That is a little bit too coarse as well. And then you could use a fine grit file or a buffer that is about 240 grit or higher as your finished filing to refine the nail and things like that a 240 grit file can be used on the natural nail plate all right so i am now to my last nail my pinky i have made it i know you guys noticed my first nail was like what the heck is she doing way more than three beads my second nail was a little bit shaky i used more than three beads as well but when i got to that third fourth and fifth nail i was moving right along I got the groove of it and I was doing very, very well. Well, in my opinion, at least. So if you noticed, even though it is the three ball method, I still use one extra bead at the apex when I'm done. That is just my added security, my added like safety blanket, because if the nail is going to break, it's going to break right there at the apex or the stress area. So I always, even with the three ball method, my personal thing is I like to add that extra bead right there. It just makes me feel better. So that's what I did. And now I'm just cleaning up my mess. So whenever you're done, you want to throw away the monomer. Do not save it from client to client. And I know when you go get your nails done in these shops, they you sit down, they pull up that same monomer liquid that's been there since morning. Since that morning, and here it is, nighttime, they're about to close the shop, and you are getting that same monomer. And that is not the way it's supposed to be. It is one little cup of monomer per client and that is it so if you get your nails done from the shop you might want to tell them look change that because you don't know how many people and what kind of cuts and oh my i don't even want to think about it just just for your own safety have them dump it and start fresh for you okay all right so my nails are done and i don't think i did too bad of a job even on my first two it's all right we're practicing right so i went ahead and did a little bit of 
touch up filing with the hand file and now I'm coming in with my e-file here my little bell file and I did the other two off camera just to save you guys some time but I'm showing you guys here I have my ceramic drill bit and I'm just touching up the corners and sides of the nail just to give it a little bit more of a tapered look and I am filing from right to left in one direction, just smoothing over the nail. So I add medium pressure to the back of the nail by the cuticle. I add medium pressure to the nail tip or the free edge. But when I'm at the middle or the apex, I do very, very light pressure in that area because I do not want to remove the acrylic that I laid there. I want that area to be a little bit more thick. So I know from, you know, watching me, you cannot tell how much pressure I'm adding where. Um, so I just want to point that out to you guys. But here you can see me do it again. Just making the sidewalls a little bit crisp. And if you're not comfortable using the e-file for this, then just use the hand file. Perfectly fine. I'm just learning how to do it this way to save me some time, you know, when I'm working in a salon or have my own little thing and I got like 100 clients a day, I need to be quick. <laughs> You never know. A hundred clients a day. You never know. <laughs> All right. So I'm basically just doing the same thing here. I file the sidewalls on each side just to taper them in a little bit. And then I applied medium pressure to the free edge, light pressure at the apex, and then medium pressure out by the cuticle area. And I think I'm pretty much done. Let me just go ahead and touch this shape up a little bit. I think that one needed a little bit. Yeah. I'll do this one again just to make it a little bit more square a little bit more crisp as my teacher calls it <laughs> she likes a good crisp nail so I gotta practice all right so I think I did okay even the first two nails because once you file them they look just as good as they look just as good as if you use a three ball method when you use a 20 ball method personally I don't really care, but you know what? I, I, I'm in school. I'm there to learn. I'm just going to do what my teacher asks. You know what I mean? I just got to do it. All right, so I touched the surface of all my nails, and most of them were smooth, but this thumb here was not as smooth as I liked it to be, so I'm just going to go over the surface of that one more time. And, yeah, pretty much that is it. So what I'm going to do now is flip Nala over. So something that I learned is whenever you do the nails, you want to flip them over and you want to look at them from the client view because that's, they're the ones that's going to be looking at the nail for the next two to three weeks. So you want to flip them over and look at it from her point of view, make sure that they look presentable and then you could continue with the rest of the service. I think I did pretty darn good. I really do you know what I, I I like these like I could definitely see me doing these nails for someone and they you know think that they were good or cute <laughs> I think I did pretty good all right so I'm not gonna polish her nails today I have this new polish collection I'm going to share these with you guys on Thursday I'm giving you a sneak peek I did not open them yet I don't know what's in here um, but I hope it's some really pretty colors. I hope it's some pretty colors because I love to share those with you guys. You just got to tune in on Thursday to see what I got. See what I got in the box. All right. Well, that is it. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this school vlog. I think this is school vlog nine. I believe it's nine guys. The next one, I'm going to try to make it be about the gel chapter. So if you have not downloaded the book already, go ahead and do that now so that when I do the gel chapter, you could read along with me. All right. Well, that is it. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.